the CDC deleting emails just recently in court files being told, hey, if you delete that, you're going to be in big trouble because you're covering up something. We want to go into how to potentially shield yourself against the skypox operation. A whistleblower just came out saying that it was a skypox. We put out the video yesterday. If you're just getting here and you don't understand what's going on, that's what we're talking about right now. We're going to cover a bunch of details that you can write down. And that video will be after this video. If you didn't check it out, you highly need to check that out because it's important. CDC flying around. We had the secret photo leaked to us from the airports. They're in these planes and they're doing something really secretive and their flight logs, like we said, has been turned off. You can see on radar the last time we could track them was all the way in August on the 3rd. You can no longer track them after that. And we want to go into with this operation potentially ongoing through chemtrails. We want to not just go into the pox, we want to go into the flu as well because we got some methods here for you to understand a way to be able to defend yourself. And I'm just going to say, this is what I'm using and this is what I'm doing. And so basically it's educational video for you to make your own informed decision. First off, most people say, well, the pox don't spread by air anyway. What are you talking about? Well, that's true and it's not true because of the new biological version of it, clay one, clay two, that uh, was made in the lab by Fauci. I did a little deeper research, some studies into it. Airborne transmission of MPOX is aerosol dynamics under different viral load conditions. Different viral load conditions. This was just a study taken. Therefore, these findings, Nobel findings, the analysis with aerosol dynamics show that aerosols carrying M pox could be present in environments where patients have resided, that airborne transmission of M pox B can occur as to report stability of the virus in the air. It was reported that the viability of airborne M pox was main, maintained for 90H under artificial test conditions in a rotating chamber. And so check it out. We got to give you this part before we get into the other part. Analysis based on aerosol dynamics of viral load in harmony with the two sets of experimental findings, Lancet microbe Susan Gould and colleagues detected infectious impox in air samples collected during bedding changing for patients in a UK hospital. The authors also detected uh, impox DNA in air samples collected at a distance of more than 1.5 meters from the bed. So if they was to aerosolize this, just like they're saying in this operation, if they were to spray this from these planes, what do you think is going to happen? How long is it going to live on you? That's the next question. So the question is, and we'll go into how long cold germs and the flu lasts on you. And that's up to an hour on your skin. It says cold germs can live on your hands for up to one hour. Influenza flu can live up to 24 or 48 hours. Now, we don't know the actual amount that impost could be on your skin, but we'll, we'll go with the same range of close to an hour, maybe 30 minutes. But that's all needed if this is a, remember the new stuff that they were putting out was spliced up and it was like mixed with so many different things. So this is what we're dealing with here. And then in the ongoing process of it, rural, urban, suburban, all these areas are targets. The vector lows and everything else, they said, oh, before the election, Homeland Security had all these meetings and they were like, well, we need to find something. So even if it's not the pox, it could be the influenza as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the part that is very important that you could use here. And we want to start breaking this down to you and then give you some of the evidence. Also, some of the parts where people are saying, oh, this is a bad thing. And people have bad stories about it. We're going to break through and debunk some of that. First off, Chlorosilver and biological warfare. This is one of the things I want to get into. And it's all these things out saying like, oh yeah, it's side effects and there's no proving methods of this and that. I'll tell you how I felt on it though. And here's WebMD telling you, chlorosilver can kill certain germs by destroying proteins. Uh, and he says this is why it was previously used in wound dressings, but silver has no known function in the body and is not a central mineral. 
taking silver by moth can cause and blah, blah, blah. They go down the line there. Let's move into the scenario. What did the, the analysts say? And, and even what did they say in Russia? Here it is. There is little defense against biological germ warfare attack and what few antidotes exist are withheld from the public as military seekers. One of the best examples is moving in a substance in the Soviets discovery in satellite Czechoslovakia way back in 1950s, a form of colloidal silver, odorless, tasteless, cheaper to produce than chlorine disinfectants, one part per billion powdered movenin in water has germicidal effect and study infect wells of infected wells it completely destroyed typhus malaria cholera amoebic dysentery uh drinking containers wash and movenin retained their germ fighting abilities for several weeks movenin seems to be cost effective prophylactic for the waterborne disease that infect the third world to astonish the Soviet military, Movina also disinfected every germ warfare bacteria in Soviet arsenal, even their newest designer poisons. In other words, Movina was too good. So check it out. Also, this guy who was ousted as a, he was in the CIA, but now the CIA he says, oh, no, nah, this guy wasn't in the CIA. He, just like they did with Bob Lazar, they said, oh, he didn't re-engineer spacecraft. This is what they do when you start to say, say some stuff that they don't like. Check it out. This is what he said about colloidal silver. He said, here's what I wrote. When former CIA microbiologist Larry Wayne Harris was asked on national television whether there was any natural substances that could protect the population against anthrax or other germ warfare agents, he responded, the only natural substance I know of effective against this microbe is colloidal silver. I tested that myself when I was with the CIA and found it effective against both anthrax and the bubonic plague pathogens. After leaving the CIA, microbiologist Larry Harris is said to have retested colloidal silver against anthrax in his private laboratory in 1997 and again found it to be highly effective. So since he said all that, the CIA is like, this guy is definitely, we don't know who he is. He's never worked for us. And he was uh, one of the biologists that actually did all the studies on this stuff. And I've used colloidal silver, wound gel. I've used all this. this is very helpful for me. You make an informed decision to think what you want to think about it. Let's go and debunk some of the uh, the stuff that people are afraid of. Here's the thing. They bring up this story about Papa Smurf and like, oh, you don't turn blue. I mean, am I blue? I've been using it for like six, seven years. Am I blue? Can anybody look at me on screen? Do I look blue? And do you want to know what the buffoon who turned blue taking colloidal, colloidal silver did? He was taking a freaking 10 ounce tumbler of it. You can't take that much. That's the whole point. You like when you look on screen, let's read the story about it before. A 57 year old man from the Pacific Northwest agreed to appear on today's show and appear is the best word since he was there because of the way he looked from head to toe. Paul Carson, the color was blue. Okay, so because every time I told somebody about this, they always bring up, oh, you can turn blue and Flower looked freshly cut. Carson brought to make his own colloidal silver at home. One, he was making it at home. He probably didn't even make it correctly. And if he did, two, he used a 10 ounce tumbler of the stuff daily, daily. You cannot do that. Hoping to improve his general health and dabbing it on his face for dermatitis after years of regimen. In a case of what doctors call a blue gray discoloration of skin and mucous membranes. He was drinking it and he was putting it on his skin. So no wonder the dude turned blue. And then some of the ones in the stores are toxic as heck. So you got to watch out for that. You see this dripper right here? This is how much colloidal silver I use. Do I use it weekly? Absolutely not. Do I use it daily? Absolutely not. I might use it a week. Like maybe like, let's say in a month, I might use it maybe three times in a month. Maybe two times sometimes it just depends on how i feel mm. but using it up to four times a month like once a week is not even a big deal if the dripper is like that for me so it's not even an issue and the story about papa smurf turning blue it shouldn't be something that obviously the media is going to put that out there because everybody looks freaking out oh my god like, oh, and then it's like stopping germ warfare so it makes sense to get you in a panic or fear 
for something that's actually been used in so many ways. Let's move into other things, though, that can be really helpful since we just got done debunking that. Now, this is a, a shield, potential shield against MPOX. It's an educational person. We want to just shoot it, let you see this here. Tom's Entertainment came out with it, and it's uh, our Vuda shield against MPOX, harnessing global herbal wisdom to prevent modern epidemics. Let's go into this next part. So we're going to read it right here. This is the part you need to see. Neem. Neem is a powerful antiviral herb known for its ability to purify blood, boost the immune system. Boiling neem leaves in water consuming. The decoction of can help cleanse the body of toxins, strengthen immunity. Neem's potent antiviral properties make it cornerstone in preventing infections like MPOX. Educational purposes, remember again. So going, going into this next part here, it shouldn't be hard for anybody to be able to get these things. They're not super expensive. As you can see on screen here, and then there's other, like none of these are super expensive. But if you got a stockpile, and let's just say this is a survival style video, a shield survival video, I would say that would be something that would be really important to have in the stockpile list. And then what are the common symptoms of the scenarios we're talking about here? Let's read that for a second. Clinical manifestations, and notice how to say manifestations because most of the time people are manifesting this with fear. Manifestations of monkeypox similar to smallpox. Most prevalent clinical manifestations include rash, fever, prudus, uh, I don't know how to say that word. Other manifestations include fatigue, sore throat, headache, cough, lagus, I already said other words, it's just a lot of crazy words on here. So again, I ain't saying all of this is manifestation. I'm saying sometimes you do get hit with stuff. But if we have the CDC running around and flying planes quietly ever since the beginning of August, and people are reporting, oh, well now I feel a little ill. So let's say you're in public and you wanna have you wanna have something to yourself we got other stuff to help you out to here in just a second for me what i do because i've seen documents on what the military did how they're not telling the public how like you might have little psyop artists from inside of the you know the agencies coming on my channel saying oh this is not that and this is you're gonna get in trouble and no i'm not so again this is what i do and this is clearly why i keep saying this is what i do because you can tell people what you do I will put it right here, all on my skin here, right? I'm talking about, I'll take the dripper. We're not talking about using a whole bunch. Just take the dripper, put it in your hand. Then I'll wipe it right here. I'll wipe it right here. And then I'll hit my face and then just the, net, the nostril, a little bit around the nostrils. That's what I do because you're breathing in everything. And I feel like if you feel that in your current area, this is a problem, that's what I would do. Because again, like this is something that right now, as we were speaking of it, you would notice the difference of how you feel. And then I just take a little small dripper by my mouth. Checking out the other pieces of information though, um, a lot of the dermatologists talk about this. Some research so, because think about it, we're getting exposed to these metals and everything all the time. If they're mixing up viruses in there, then we gotta really be careful. So antioxidant makes sub substantial difference. Uh, skin cuticles, original vitamin C, vitamin C E, ferulic is proven to reduce up to 48% of oxidative damage in a skin formed by interaction of UV pollution and metal. And what we know is they are spraying us with heavy metals and pollution. So when you get the correct forms of vitamin C and maybe you could figure out something yourself, maybe you don't want to buy something like that. You don't want vitamin C serum. That's too. I'm not sure how vitamin C absorbs into the skin. If you were just to get a fruit or something like that and you were to put it on yourself, I'm not sure topically how that would help you. But I know the serum they're using is supposed to be something. But I'm pretty sure there's studies on, on the vitamin C you put in on your skin, but this is protecting from metals because the first layers to anything hitting you is, is hitting you at the skin level. Somebody says, bro, I got some more information for you. Just send it on in then. Vitamin C is 182 a bottle. 
holy crap. Somebody said that in the comment section, maybe maybe you can try to make it yourself then. Maybe look into that and try to figure out some way to do it yourself. Other than that, 182 a bottle, I'm hearing it was cheaper than that. So uh, another person says, prayer is the only true protection we have. That's true, but also you gotta use stuff that was put on there. It's even scripture said herbs of the earth was used for the healing of the body. So it makes sense that we use what was put here as well. So, and then in conjunction with that, you combine it with the power of prayer, and yes, that explodes it to the next level. Uh, put vitamin C in your belly hole for the best absorption. You know, as we go uh, down the line of all this, sometimes some people's stomach don't absorb things at the same rate as others. So the thing is, you gotta know the absorption rate and with, you know, whatever you're using is, that's gonna be highly important. But the real solution basically in my opinion and point of view and from what I've known colloidal silver has helped me a lot and here's what might happen to you when you first uh, when, I, when I first took it or you took take it but let's you might get this sweat detox at night and that happens sometimes because your body's trying to push stuff out and what I do is after I take silver because silver the particles of it you know, it'll be some buffoon who watched the video and like, oh yeah, you get stuck in you and they get stuck. True. What you can do, what I do, is I take nascent iodine and then I'll drip that. And nascent iodine removes heavy metals from your body. So silver is classified as a metal, not a heavy metal, but so then it's flushing out everything that's left over and it's, it's constantly being stuff in the atmosphere that's coming in too. So that's important to do. The all the colloidal silver I take, I always follow up within that same month with some nascent iodine. So that's what I do. And I've been fine for the last couple of years taking it, over six years. Somebody says pine needle teas. Oh yeah, definitely. We talked about the pine needle teas, how that helps uh, scientific studies and the National Institutes of Health come out talking about how it protects and coats the DNA, which is something they're using a lot. I said selenium helps duration and vitamins are now beneficial with selenium. Selenium is actually something that is important. It's another form of salt, just like iodine. And it was taken out of the supply a couple of years back. It's in the water sometimes, but so many toxic things is in the water. So, you know, even if you're taking it in the water, you might be getting more toxic things than helpful things. So that's why it's good to get, in my opinion, a supplement and then use it in the water or something like that. So again, if you did miss the video where Operation Skypox were showing the whistleblower who's, yeah, they say it sounds like AI, but it's actually somebody whose voice has been covered over with technology because they didn't want them to be actually exposed. But that video right here is highly important for you to watch. And I hope this video helps.